<sighs> We're back, baby. We are back. Thank you to the six of you out there waiting to wait for us to return. We are back. It is the weekend. It's spooky season. This has been a tough month, Chris. It's been a busy month. <laughs> it's been very tough. It was a long, long, long month, long last couple of weeks, a lot of self-reflecting, especially over the bye week uh, and then coming back uh, for the first game back. This is the day before the Steelers play the Steelers and Jaguars tomorrow. Uh, this podcast will be going up today as well as last week's podcast that I never posted will be also be up today. Don't listen to it or do. Doesn't really matter. We ranted a lot. We vented about the Steelers struggles and how they suck on offense. And we said... If they would prove us wrong against the Rams, we'd give them their flowers. And they kind of did, Chris. They kind of did prove us wrong. Not all the way, but for a quarter, they did. <laughs> Proved us wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's kind of been the tale of two halves of the season. Uh, the first half is utter uh, humiliation and just uh, regret and sadness. And then the second half of football uh, usually is a little better until the fourth quarter. And then we seem to look like a real team. Uh, stand by, Chris. I have to go. I'll have to edit this out. I have to go tell Sam to stop. Okay. We do what right you got to do. I'll be right back. Today's episode is brought to you by Gregory's Garbage Emporium. You trash it, we bag it. You know, uh, something that I'd like to talk about involving the Steelers is just their willingness to never change. They have been a team that has just been overlooked constantly. And and, and <laughs> I don't know if you guys can hear this, but I can definitely hear Sam and Dom. Sam's not having a good time. Sam, Sam wants to hang out, I think. Anyway, the disappointment that the Steelers are this season. And it, it's funny because there has been a, like, ruse going on by the Steelers. It's a lot of, like, oh, the Steelers might actually be an AFC threat. Oh, the Steelers might actually be able to do something. I don't, I still, like, I don't know, I try to be a realist with all of this stuff. And there's no chance that this team is still considered a competitive threat against like the Kansas city chiefs or the Buffalo bills, or heck, even if we somehow did make it to the super bowl, we're not beating the 49ers at full strength or the Eagles. Um, there's a lot of work to be done and I hope we continue to improve. We did see a lot of positivities, but like, gosh, so many people. Oh, here he is. Could you hear you're me actually talking time? about stuff. Yeah, you're actually talking about stuff. I am. I I am. Right. You, you should kind of listen back to it. It's kind of funny. I I, I, I can hear you and Sam talking. Then. I mean, oh. <laughs> only five of you listen to it, and Dad included. So I probably won't edit I mean, it out. I still probably would, just because it's like uh, uh, probably things that we'll bring up later, or that I would talk to you about. No, that's okay. Uh, anyways, your I was choice. Kind of what you're saying, but but. Uh, my God. Okay. Uh, back at it. We usually do highlights every week of the games. Um, the Steelers did beat the Rams. Um, what was the final score that? 20... 24-17. No. 24-17. Yeah. They beat the, they beat the Rams. Uh, usually do highlights. We I, like, Again, it's the day before the game. Not doing highlights this week on the podcast. When I post these on social media, I'll just do them on my own time. And I'll just make them up on the spot. Uh, but yeah, they won. And I think what Chris is saying, and we said tale of two halves, I'd like to change that to tale of one quarter because Kenny plays good <laughs> in the fourth quarter. They looked like garbage for three quarters. They really did. At halftime, I thought they were for sure losing. They had three points. They had uh, 100 yards, maybe. Um, I was like, "There's." We, we said on the podcast, there's no way they win this game unless they score points. So I thought they were not going to win that game. And lo and behold, in the fourth quarter, they scored points. They scored. They, they got like 200 plus yards in the fourth quarter. I think they ended up with 300 yards total. Still have not broken the 400 yard mark yet. So that streak still lives on. I think it's 53 games straight or 54. So that game lives on. 
Thank you, Canada. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, they they looked really good in that fourth quarter. And it, what sucks about it is if you're a Steeler fan and you're optimistic and you like to see what those things, you already just get sucked right back in into the BS of optimism. And now I feel like we've got a chance, baby. If they can build off this, we've got a chance in these games. It's funny that you say that, like the sucking in effect, because I totally agree. You know, we are four and two. We're looking pretty good. Uh, Tomlin is pulling wins out of his butt like he always does year in and year out. Looking pretty However, good from a the standing, thing, from, looking pretty good from a, I just want to yes. clarify, from a standing standpoint, not from like a team. We still look like ass. No, 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 uh, no. Offensive yeah. defense are ranked dead last in like everything. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, granted, I do think it was a step in the right direction last week. Not the whole game, like we said. There are bits and pieces throughout the game, but mostly in the fourth quarter where I feel like offense definitely did its part. The thing that has been frustrating me the most about this whole where the Steelers are, four and two, they're, you know, they're finding ways to win. That's great and everything, but I really want all the analysts and everything to like stop hyping us up to be something that we're not. Everyone being like, I think the Steelers can be a threat in the AFC. I think, yeah, sure. But there's no way we're still competing with teams like the Chiefs. The, you know, we're, we're not going to be beating those kinds of caliber teams with the team that we have. I think we have the talent. It's just the coaching and the the offensive schematics, even defensive. I mean, our defensive rankings are pretty uh, atrocious. Yeah, but I mean, like, that's what they talk about. Like when you say bring up the good teams, they say that we the Steelers hang on. They hang around until that fourth quarter, and Kenny does play well in the fourth quarter. He really does. Like, I, he I'll does. give him his credit for that. So then it's like they hang around until the fourth quarter, and then Kenny and the offense can do their thing, and then they find a way to win. And that is not a winning recipe, just like you said. It is no. not the way you're going to win games in the NFL, especially against the premier teams. And uh, that is something they got to fix quick. Obviously, I don't, there's not a lot of faith to fix it. They looked good in the fourth quarter. Canada called some good plays in the fourth quarter. They did some stuff. Uh, Kenny had some audibles, but they have to play like that the whole time. And yeah. uh, but it was a good win. I was very happy with it. I was very distracted. It's been a busy month, <laughs> but it's a good win. And I saw some good things from it. And now, moving forward, this week or tomorrow, they play the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. The Jaguars are five and two. We're four and two. Uh, like we just talked about with the Steelers having bad stats. I mean, they're de- they're ranked last in pretty much everything. And uh, I just read a stat to Chris that there's two teams in the NFL that are being outgained in every single game, and it's the Cardinals and the Steelers. Mm-hmm. The Steelers are being outgained 660 yards so far total, and they're four and two. So I don't know how they keep finding a way to win. The defense gets turnovers and you know, bend but don't break. All the same stuff we repeated before a thousand times. So now we're playing the Jags. Mm-hmm. They're looking good. They're kind of having up and down yeah. moments too, but they're looking good. They're on a hot streak. <clears throat> I would say. Uh, there's some things to look out for. I'll leave that to Chris first. I'll comment on him. But Chris, do you want to jump in on your segment that you like to talk about? Of course I would. This is the keys to the game. Keys to the right, game Dom, brought so to you I've... by Allstate. Oh. By Gillette. Uh, shave, shave those faces. They're looking shave. pretty scruffy. Shave those nether regions. Oh, Manscape partnered with Gillette. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm not hating. I'm chafing. Anyways, I'm not here <laughs> to talk about my partnership with the lawnmower 3000. OK, I'm here to talk about the Steelers and I'm here to talk about what it takes for us to maybe pull away with a W this week. All right. So here's here's a few struggles that we have approaching us. OK, uh, Steelers already do not have a very solid cornerback uh, group. And the one bright spot to our cornerback group, Joey Porter Jr., is listed as questionable coming into the game. I know we've seen uh, Luck Barco. How do you say his last name? Barco. Barco. And who else? Uh, Darius Rush. First team reps. Yeah, Darius Rush getting first team reps. That scares the heck out of me. Steelers have been giving up 100-yard receivers every single week of the season since the season has started. But... Again, I don't know if that's necessarily something to say that's going to lose us the game because, heck, we're 4-2 and two and we've done it every single week this year. So um, I do think it's going to be presenting some additional challenges if we do not have a healthy cornerback group uh, and having those guys who are like practice squad players coming in at first-team reps. But 
Uh, that's why you plan and you coach for those things. Maybe add additional coverages, some hidden coverages, uh, just kind of things <laughs> that we don't do ever. So, so yeah, about uh, to say. <laughs> Key to the game, I think, definitely defensive schematics uh, from the uh, secondary section. Uh, we need to find ways to stop the quick release with Trevor Lawrence. Uh, another big key to the game, always, always, 100% to me, is our edge defenders. Alex Highsmith and TJ Watt are dominant week in and week out. They're the reason that we have four wins uh, this year and the reason that we stay so competitive I saw a stat where against the Blitz, uh, Trevor Lawrence is and the Jaguars are pretty close to dead last with completion percentage, you know, um, just pa- passing statistics in general. And the Steelers are the fourth most blitzing defense and I one of the top blitzing defenses in the league right now. Uh, so that's going to be huge. Obviously, if we can contain the receivers long enough to give Watt and Highsmith a chance to get in there and get sacks going, uh, heck, that can be the pivotal change to a game. But let's talk about the offensive side of the ball, shall we? The side that has struggled so much for so long. We've seen improvements last week. Uh, Dan Moore was playing probably his best game of the season, which uh, upsets me because Broderick Jones deserves to play. Uh, but it... It's good. Um, <laughs> and the, you know, the, the line seems to be improving and moving in the right direction. However, if we can kind of turn that into positive rush yards and everything, that would be great. Um, still not getting quite the rushing presence we want. But at the same time, we did score three rushing touchdowns all last week. Dom and I said it. Uh, we don't ask for much. But if this team could at least score three touchdowns, I don't care how it's done, uh, but three touchdowns, that's 21 points, I think we could win a majority of our games. Uh, so keep the blocking, uh, high intensity, keep keep the pocket clean, uh, and get our guys involved. I, I know we always stress about getting the middle of the field. I'm not holding my breath. That's not going to happen. So I'm not even going to talk about it. Just now with... DJ back and Pickens kind of going after his third hundred yard ball game uh, in a row. I know just expect to see a lot of. uh, This week, Uh, but to me, those are my keys to the game. Dom, if you would like to elaborate, you could, but if you are too busy uh, to, because of children, I get it. Um, I'm going to throw back to you in a second, but I would like to say that, like, yeah, those are the same points I agree with. Um, a couple stats to look out for. Um, Trevor Lawrence in the Jaguars are the worst team against the pass rush. I know you said that, uh, I think. So statistically, they're like one of the worst teams against the pass rush. And that's supposed to be our strong suit. Maybe Cam Hayward possibly plays. He is, uh, he practiced a couple days, but they might hold him out because we're on a short week. We play again. We play on Thursday. So against the tit- Titans at home. Uh, but regardless, pass rush is going to be big because they're not good at stopping it. And with, you mentioned George Pickens. Deontay Johnson had a nice game coming back from injury finally. It would get him open. There's kind of like this uh, back and forth trash talking between the Jaguars cornerbacks and the receivers. Um, I'll take our receivers over the cornerbacks. I don't even know them that well. The, car, the Jaguars pass defense is actually playing pretty well. Their cornerbacks are playing pretty well. But I will take our guys over that. But that is going to be a big matchup. They need to win those matchups if I'm going to put my stamp approval on them. And I will be right back again. Throw it back to you. Yeah, of course, of course. Matt Canada did go out and say that it is his plan to get the tight ends a lot more involved. Just kind of touching on that a little bit. I would like to get them involved in general. I mean, it's been really pathetic uh, other than maybe Connor Hayward getting the ball. And I love Connor Hayward. Uh, but when you have guys like Pat Fryermuth and Darnell Washington, I mean, especially with Pat Fryermuth gone, I, I highly anticipated Darnell Washington's productivity to just kind of skyrocket moving into the last couple weeks and even this week. Um, and I know there's that, um, you know, idea and goal to go and do that. But at the same time, I got to see it. It's It's hard to actually 
believe in the words that Canada is going to say because I feel like a lot of times he just feeds us lip service to get us off of his back and and for us to continue moving forward. Um, so I would really, really, really like to see some involvement, not only from our tight ends, but especially over the middle of the field. Uh, I saw a statistic that was saying, you know, uh, targets of throws over the middle of the field per game. And actually, surprisingly, believe it or not, Steelers are right in the middle of that group between all the teams. Uh, Although it just doesn't feel that way because we never, ever attack the middle of the field. So it'd be nice to actually get that aspect of the game going, involve our tight ends like Canada was saying, uh, and, and just see what this offense can do with uh, kind of how we've been improving. And that was Chris talk, everybody. Chris laid down the facts, <laughs> the straight stats for you. Uh, like we said, it's been a busy month. It's been a weird month. Uh, not having been able to do a lot of podcast content. Can't even record my own podcast in my house without being distracted by children. And that's just the way it goes, man. That's the life of a dad. Chris has got it on his shirt right there. Dad incoming. He'll know soon when he's got a, uh, he was burping a baby at the same time as a podcast. Listen for the new ones featuring Chris's new kid. <laughs> um, let's, I mean, you let it all out there. I have nothing to add to that. The game's on tomorrow. I, I will say that uh, if you're feeling optimistic about the Steelers, even though the stats and everything else don't lead you to feel that way <laughs> because they've been sucking pretty much all year, although that fourth quarter was nice so they can build off that, uh, I'm in that more optimistic realm to you guys. I, I even know this last podcast, which none of you listened to because I didn't post it. It is posted now. Um, I was ranting and venting and I'm pissed the entire time. I'm also delusional and optimistic. And I, uh, <laughs> I think I, I want them to succeed. I want them to win. I, I want Matt Cannon to be fired, but I also want him to do well because he is our coach. If he's going to turn around, do well. And this is a big test for the team. If they're for if they're truly four and two, looking for a playoff spot for the first playoff win in a long time against the team that's five and two, probably gonna win that division in the AC South. This is a good test. Me and Chris did playoff or we did a excuse me, schedule predictions before the season. And off the air, Chris would, would talk to me and he would pick kind of all the the best teams on our schedule for us to lose to. And I was like, Chris, we can't can't lose to all the good teams, because then you go to the playoffs and you lose to the first good team you play. You, you gotta be good. You gotta be good teams too. You have to. So the last year when we played good teams, we got blown out every single time. We got it. We gotta be a good team. And I think this is a really good test to see can this team handle playing a good team, or is it gonna be like the past couple of years where you get blown out by a good team? I mean, we've done it this year too. Blown out last year by Buffalo, by the Eagles, um, by uh, San Fran this year. You know, but happens. to be fair, normally it's like once or twice that we get blown out by a good team. We've already been blown out twice this year for both of our losses. So maybe, just maybe, optimistically looking at it, we're not going to get that blowout, and we're going to play a lot more competitive with the Jaguars and other teams well, that's, this year. That's, that's what I'm saying, though, is like when we talked about the way we play games where we hang around and try to beat in the fourth quarter, that's not sustainable against someone like the Chiefs. Oh, like absolutely if we the, not. If we play, if we play the Chiefs right now, I would expect to get blown out, and that's not good. If we play the Bills right now, depending on what Bills team you see, you might get blown out. That's not good. I think the Jaguars yeah. are a good test because even though they're winning games, they're kind of up and down on the way they do things. The same that we are, we're more down than up, but they're up and down on the way they do things. That's a good test for us to see can we match up and beat these teams. Then if you just beat these teams, guys, then your optimism is going to really rise. If they can somehow beat the Jaguars tomorrow, then you're looking at again. You can't look ahead at schedules. The fans can. We can do it. But you gotta be. The, but you should beat Tennessee, and you should, should. beat Green Bay at home. You should. And then you're looking at seven and two. When you're about really to go, good. When you're about to go on a two game road uh, road game streak in Ohio against Cleveland and Cincinnati, and to be seven and two going into those two games is really nice. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room, especially for a division that is so. Dang close. I mean, yeah, Ravens are leading the division with five and two. The Browns are tied with us at four and two. I mean, they, even even the Bengals who started off slow, they're three and three. They're really not far away from us right now. We need these next and they three could wins. Win tomorrow. To, and they can they win could. tomorrow, even, even though Purdy's back. I just got word. 
I don't know how he came back oh, already. Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he came back wow. already. Concussions aren't real. That's that's what I'm starting to learn from the NFL. That's true. Maybe they just They're said like, he had a concussion. It's not a Tua concussion. To... Maybe they just said he had a concussion so they could have an excuse for why he sucked at the end of the Vikings game. Yeah, uh, yeah. So that... I hope he keeps sucking, but... No, whatever. I want them to beat the Bengals, man. Yeah, I'm just saying in general. I'm not saying for tomorrow, but... Uh, um, real quick, he, before we move on to games and we end this thing, Chris. Yeah. Let's share something else to say. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's. it makes me laugh because I think you and I are very realistic when it comes to the Steelers and the NFL. Like We try not to be those annoying fans that are like, the Steelers are the best. No way anyone can beat us. Uh, and I've always seen you as the more realist one of the two of us. And uh, like... Uh, but it's kind of funny because I feel like this year I've been more of the pessimist because yeah. I know you've called me out in like earlier episodes and then yeah. you're like, you know what, Chris, you are right. They do suck. And I'm like, and now, yeah. now they're, they're bringing you back. You're like, I'm being optimistic here. And I'm like, Dom, mm. let's be careful. Right. Like, I, I hope we do win, but like, I'm not holding my breath. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I'm not either. I, you know, like it, would it shock me if the Jaguars won? No. Especially the way we play games. I kind of felt I had a sense of optimism too for the Rams game that was deflated immediately by halftime. When I saw us only score three points, I was like, man, some shit never changes. <laughs> it's just, it's, it just always stays the same. And then it did change the fourth quarter to my surprise. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not holding my breath either, man. Like, I, I wouldn't be shocked if the Jaguars won. I just think, like, mm. if you want to be optimistic, if you want to see them turn the season around, this is a big test. And they kind of need to win that game to see them turn it around because they're going to drop other ones. They're playing the Browns. Yeah. That's going to be a tough game. I hope they can beat them because I'd love to sweep the Browns. But the, like you said, the Bengals are coming on strong after their slow start. And Cincinnati is going to be a tough game. That's probably a loss. So they're going to start stacking losses here uh, a little, in a little bit. You know, yeah. we could we could lose both those games in Ohio. So that's why it'd be nice to get to seven and two and then kind of go through saying. that stint and then lose seven and four. You know. Um, we need to take advantage of what is ahead of us. Not, and obviously, we've said this before. No, no game is guaranteed in the NFL, and that has been shown by when we thought we were going to pounce on the Texans. But um, just because they're hopefully for sure wins, I mean, I hope we can just get wins against the Titans and the Packers because they seem very attainable. I agree. Uh, speaking of attainable, let's talk about trades real quick before we go. Um, the trading deadline one? is Tuesday on Halloween. There has been no big trades yet, but there could be some coming around the NFL. And uh, one of, and the Steelers could be potentially involved in it. Will that happen? It's tough to say, Chris. Omar Khan doing things a lot differently than Kevin Colbert did. Yes, he everyone is. Talks, everyone talks about how, well, the Steelers won't make a trade because they never do. And you could be right. But they could because it's Omar Khan. And our weakest spot is cornerback. Joy Porter playing more has been helpful. He had a really good game against the Rams. Um, not tackling, but, you know, that's coachable. We can figure that out. Uh, so there is options out there. I would say some of the big options to look for, the most highly unlikely option is Pat Sertain from the Broncos. It's, I think it's going to take a lot unless we see another Omar Khan fleece job, the, which I guess could happen. <laughs> but I think good, it's going to take a well lot. It's, it's going to take a lot. But Chris and I were discussing maybe it's worth a lot to have a guy like that, and then you're set. I mean, I don't know if I'm down for two first round picks because that knocks us out the next two years. But uh, just to for you guys inside on where Chris and I are thinking, because draft season's kind of becoming more of our favorite season now, maybe because the NFL season kind of yeah. sucks. <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to scout. I feel like we've been good at it. Um. The Maybe Steelers. we should just turn this podcast away from the season and away from the Steelers and just do like a draft only podcast. Yeah, and just and just for one month and then see you guys next yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, all right, well that was it. We gave you our in depth look of what who's gonna be good and who's gonna be trash. So yeah. Um the Steelers, in my opinion, for next year's drafts, as of right now, their top three needs, not in any order, are cornerback center and middle linebacker middle linebackers are playing well but when your whole little middle linebacker core is on free agency it's just nice to have one homegrown and i'm not talking about freaking the guy everyone loves <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not counting him what's his name the seventh rounder 
Uh, Spencer and no, wait. the oh, linebacker. Tries? Oh wait, the linebacker from last year that everyone likes. Middle linebacker. Why can't I think of it? I'm having the hardest time. Oh my god, this pissed me off. Now I have to look it up. Now it needs to oh, be done. Oh, Mark Robinson. Yeah, Mark Robinson. That's our only homegrown linebacker right now, and I and I and I personally don't have high hopes for him. I know a lot of people do. I don't. Um, so I would say cornerback, middle linebacker, center are their biggest th- three biggest needs. Generally speaking, center. And middle linebacker are not high value positions anymore. Sure, some of them go in the first round. It happens, but they're generally not high value positions. Usually, some of those guys go in the second round, early second even. Uh, so, if you're going to draft one of those one of those positions in the first round next year, it's going to be a cornerback. I'm cool with giving up one first round pick for Sertain because it's either you draft one next year and develop them, or you just get rid of it and take Sertain now, and you have an All Pro. It's kind of the way that goes. Uh, but Sertain's an option. Justin Simmons, Sertain's teammate in uh, Denver, is another option to get. He plays mostly free safety, so it'll be interesting. But obviously, you know, we've been moving Mika around. I love Mika to be back in the middle field, but I, I don't know how they get that to work. Maybe it'd be a disaster, but just imagining Justin, because I don't think our safety play besides Mika has been very good. I don't think KZ and Keanu Neal have been doing it for me, to be honest. So to have a backfield with Justin Simmons and Mika Fitzpatrick, oof. That'd be kind of crazy. Yeah. That kind of go nuts. Uh, Another quarterbacks to look out for. um, I'll just go through them quickly. Jalen Johnson from the Bears could happen, but it's more uh, viable, but it sounds like he might get a contract extension. J.C. Horn from the Panthers. uh, Mm. First round pick the same year as Pat Sertain, but injury prone. So maybe they get rid of him for less than what Pat Sertain would be. He's never been all pro like Pat Sertain has. And uh, Kair Elam, I think, was also quarterback the same year. Uh, no, not the same year. He was two years ago uh, from the Bills. Um, has been struggling with them, has not been getting playing time. That would not fix our things right away, but adds to the room of tall, freaky, fast corners. So these trades could happen. I know people have been talking about wide receiver. Maybe. Depends on who it is and what we give up for it. I'm not like, I'm not really too concerned about that because our offensive problems are way bigger than wide receiver, especially third string wide receiver. Our offensive problems are way bigger than that. Uh, some people have talked about tight ends. That doesn't make any sense to me. We don't target our tight ends to begin with. Chris already alluded to Matt Canada saying he's going to target tight ends. Look for three more catches this week. We'll see what happens. Um, and se- someone mentioned center, but I just don't think there's a really good enough center to that. That someone's going to want to trade away. Like there's no one that yeah. good. That someone's going to want to trade away. Uh, and not to mention that you know, hopefully. We're building on things. Mason Cole had his best game of the season last week. I talked about how Aaron Donald would destroy him, and Aaron Donald's kind of a non-factor through the whole blocking yeah. scheme. So give it up to coaching for once for kind of blocking him out of the scheme, you know? Right. Um, yeah. cool best. So, so, we'll so my my opinion is cornerback, or I guess safety if you get Justin Simmons. But be able to look out for that. Uh, the deadline is this Tuesday, Halloween. Happy Halloween, you spooky, ghouly freaks. Uh, let's do <laughs> game picks of the week, Chris. Let's get out of here. Uh, let's do it. Because I got to edit this and upload it. I ain't got time for that. True that. And you have kids. But I think Laura just got home. Laura is my wife, for anyone who wants to know. Yes, I am married. I am not as big as a loser as it may right? seem. <laughs> I know. Um, but uh, she's got home, so I think I'm in the clear for a little bit. I am also Okay, married. here we go. Well, uh, so we didn't do last week's picks. Those are voided. Whatever. <laughs> is what it is. Um, and Chris we and did I pick both the Bills, picked, but... Yeah, we would have picked the Bills for Thursday. So that is what it is. Uh, Giants... Oh, sorry. Jets at Giants. Same stadium, same home field. There's no home field advantage. They both play the same place. Uh, Jets. Yeah, me too. Uh, even though Tyrod, the GOAT's playing. I'm going to go Jets. I read a funny tweet that said... It was Daniel Jones being out, and it said, this is bad news for the Jets. <laughs> this Tyrod's, this Tyrod's yeah. better. Uh, Jags at Steelers. Steelers. Yeah, I'm going to us. Talking about delusion, but that's what I'm doing. Uh, Eagles yeah. at Commanders. 
Uh, this is where I have it in my in my upset. I'm gonna go with the Commanders. I feel ya. It was a close game last time, thirty four thirty one. I'm gonna go Eagles. Um, I don't know. I, I, Commanders have been really up and down lately, so I'm gonna go Eagles. Yeah. Uh, Rams at Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys. Even though I do think this could be another upset. Yeah, I would love a Rams win, but I'm going to go Cowboys as well. Uh, Vikings at Packers. P8. No, I'm kidding. Vikings. Well, 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 Vikings. A couple weeks ago, I talked about you tanking for Caleb Williams and trading Kirk Cousins away, and then you've won two games straight, especially against the 49ers. So I, too, am going with the Vikings. This would have been a game I picked the Packers for. Uh, Packers could still win this game. Divisional games are tough, and it's in Lambeau. I'm going to go Vikings, though. It's how, it's, I feel like they're... They they woke up on after the Buccaneers loss. They woke up on Tuesday morning or Friday morning, and they are now the seventh seed in the playoffs. You don't think that excites Crazy. them to make a playoff push? <laughs> it does. So I yeah. say they get the win. Falcons at Titans. Falcons. Indeed, Falcons. Uh, Titans feel like they're training everybody. Uh, Will Levis is first start though, so be on the lookout for Falcons. that if you care. At all, but I'm still going Falcons. <laughs> um, Patriots at Dolphins. Dolphins. What if, though, it's no longer the Miami miracle because the rules have reversed and then we have a New England miracle? It's going to happen. Patriots are pretty bad, though. I can't believe they won last week against the Bills. Um, but the Dude, for real. Do- Dolphins don't have Tyreek Hill potentially this week. I don't remember. I haven't seen a confirmation. He may play, might play, might not play. But Jalen Ramsey's making his debut. I'm gonna go with uh, Tyreek, the Dolphins still. Tyreek said he's playing. Well, for whatever that's worth. Tyreek also said he's gonna do porn after the NFL. So I don't know. I don't know what they'd be talking about. <laughs> I mean, we only have time to tell. <laughs> See you in a couple of years, Tyreek. I mean, what? Yeah. I mean, I mean, pause. I mean, he could start now. I don't know. True. Uh, he'd be in defenses. Anyways, um, Saints <laughs> at Colts. Uh, I'm going to say the Colts. I am too. I'm going to say Colts as well. They should have beat the Browns last week, but the refs gave him another win. Uh, also, Texans- the Colts should just oh, stick with Gardner Minshew. Well, they are, because I'm pretty sure Anthony Richardson's done for the year. So he is out are. for the year. I'm just saying in general. Oh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Uh, Texans at Panthers. Texans at Panthers. I'm going to go Texans. Um, the battle the, of the uh, first two quarterbacks taken off the board. Yeah, huh? The rookie bowl. I'm also going Texans. This I think early in the year, I would have picked the Panthers in this game. But I'm going to go Texans. Uh, yeah. Browns at Seahawks. Uh, you know, what was very surprising when we were doing our family picks is our own father picked the Seahawks. And I picked the Browns, and I hope it's the Seahawks, but I'm going to go with the Browns. I hope it's Seattle as well, but I'm also with the Browns. The Seahawks, like the Steelers, are a 4-2 and two team that I just don't believe in, unfortunately. They're, and the Browns... They're even very though they hit up, miss. Yeah, even though the Browns let up 8 billion points to the Colts last week, even though they, people like to say they had a great defensive performance because Miles Garrett played well, well they still have up 38 points to the Colts. Um, their defense is very good, though. So I'm going to go Browns on that one. Another P.J. Walker start. Good for him. (laughs) Uh, Bengals at 49ers. Uh, I said Bengals, even though I guess Brock is playing. I'm still going to go with Bengals. I'm going Niners. Uh, That's more of a wish than it is a prediction. Yeah, I hope you're right. Uh, Chiefs at Broncos. Well, the Broncos have never beat the Chiefs in the entirety of their existence, so I'm going to go with the Chiefs. Feels that way. Since 2015, I am also going Chiefs. However, Taylor Swift will not be there, so... Yeah. uh, Now we got bad blood. (laughs) Wow. But I'm going to shake it off. Anyways, uh, Ravens at Cardinals. (laughs) Ah, Ravens. Ravens indeed. We love a Cardinals win. We love a Hollywood Brown uh, revenge game. Hollywood Brown is also cool. rumored to be to be traded to the Steelers. Just so you know. Do I really care? Not really, but just a rumor. Um, Bears at Chargers. 
Uh, Bears at Chargers. Uh, Chargers. Going Chargers. Justin Fields out again, even though they're his backup. Played out of his mind last week. Well, now I should say out of his mind. They just scored a lot. Uh, Raiders at Lions to finish it off. Uh, Raiders at Lions. Lions. I also am going Lions. And that will be this week's podcast. The game is tomorrow. You can follow us on TikTok, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on uh, who knows, on Wizards 101. And uh, on, you can give us money on Patreon. We don't have a Patreon, Please. but our, you just figure it out and we'll get money. Thanks. Uh, Chris, you have any last words? Go Steelers. Go Steelers and happy Halloween, you sons of witches. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Peace.